Hi Gigi, Julie and Pam, thanks for being here. I appreciate you sharing also. If you haven't shared already, I would appreciate it if you just click that share and you can um, choose where you'd like to share it to. And that helps me gain viewers and followers, helps with my Facebook algorithm, all that. So um, I'm glad you're here tonight. I have a fun technique for you that I haven't done in quite a while. We're going to wait just a few minutes for other people to jump on. I am giving a card away tonight, so if you are watching, be sure to comment. And again, I appreciate it if you share as well, both during my live video as well as afterwards. Somebody asked me today, am I not doing Facebook Lives anymore? Yes, I am doing Facebook Lives still. Um, had a little break um, just because I was super busy with other things. I had a big World Card Making Day event that I um, hosted, a virtual event that I hosted with some of my team members. And then this past weekend, Friday through Monday, was my um, annual October Creative Escape Weekend. So there's a lot of work involved in that. And um, plus I was gone. And what else happened that I missed a Facebook Live? Um, I went to a funeral, just a number of things. So um, I think it's, I only had one, maybe two Facebook Lives in the last two weeks, but I'm back on track and um, happy to be with you all tonight. So are you ready to see this? Oh, I should say, if you have not seen, and this will be, show up backwards, um, if you haven't seen my standing fun fold card from the last Facebook Live I did, it is on my blog today, stampinpeace.com, and you can find all the information there, a video demonstration, um, supply list, and cutting dimensions as well. So let me flip my phone around so that we can get started with today's demonstration. Today I'm featuring one of my returning favorites. It was around for the holiday season last year and uh, people loved it so much that Stampin' Up! brought it back for us. And I'm going to be using these two sentiments and the holly and berries. So let me first show you what we're making and then I will show you how to do it. And welcome to Char, Mary Lou, Peggy, Carol. I'm glad you're all here. Feel free to share so that we can get other people joining us for this fun demonstration. Hi, Carol. Two Carols in a row. <laughs> okay, so this is my card. And there's the inside. And it's a technique that I call triple layer stamping. Um, you may have seen some people call it triple, triple time stamping. So either one, triple layer stamping or triple time stamping. And it just has a really neat effect with all these mats and frames and different layers. So let me show you how to do this. First of all, you're going to need a piece of five and a half by eight and a half piece of this is cherry cobbler that I'm using cardstock you're going to need two more pieces of that cardstock four and a quarter by three inches and three and a quarter inches by two inches so four and a quarter by three and three and a quarter by two then you're going to need a piece of Whisper White for the inside. And I already went ahead and stamped this because I want to remember um, to make this card vertical. My first one was horizontal and I want to make this card vertical. So I'm going to go ahead and put this in here right away. I decided to stamp it just before I got on. And that's my reminder that I'm switching up my card from horizontal to vertical. And I also went ahead and stamped 
deck the halls with cherry cobbler and punched it with a one and a half inch circle punch. Now you're going to need three more pieces of Whisper White. One that is five and a quarter by four inches. Another that is four inches by two and three quarter. And the smallest one is three inches by one and three quarters. So I'm going to set these pieces aside for now. And I'm going to stamp, um, let me do this. I'm going to stamp all three of these. But before I stamp these together, I wanna show you what to do with these three pieces. You wanna put on the teeniest, tiniest bit of adhesive. One that will allow you to um, pull the layers apart when you're finished um, stamping them, okay? So I just have the tiny, tiny bit. I'm going to center this on top of the larger piece and press it down lightly in the middle where that adhesive is. And then again, just a teeny tiny bit of adhesive. I'm going to center the third and smallest piece and press it down lightly in the center. Now this is where I'm going to start stamping. I was looking for a piece of scrap paper. Here, we'll use this because I will be stamping off some. All right, I am going to stamp the holly and berries with the black memento ink and i'm using this because i'm going to be coloring with the stampin blends and i'm going to go ahead and start in the middle and then i'm going to work my way out And again, I'm just stamping all three layers at the same time because I adhered those layers together with that tiny bit of adhesive. They're not moving. And just do a random stamping pattern when you're doing this. That's how you're going to get the best effect put just a little leaf in there and I'm going to put just a little berry in that corner and I think that looks really good so now I'm going to leave all of these layers in place and I'm going to start coloring let me close up that black ink first there we go. I'm using um, Cherry Cobbler Stampin' Blends, both light and dark. I'm starting with the dark. I'm gonna do some kind of speedy coloring here. But wait till you see how this all comes together. Now this is a technique, the triple layer stamping technique, is one that you see quite a bit with solid stamped images. But I wanted to show you this because it does not have to be done with solid images. You can have ones like this that need to be um, filled in with some color. I love holly and berries. It, to me, it's just sort of the iconic um, traditional Christmas decor, kind of like the 
poinsettias, just very classic. Okay, now I'm going to color my holly leaves with mossy meadow. And I can always go back in afterwards, but I want to do it so you can see what happens when I take these layers apart and put the rest of the card together. The first house I, um, my family lived in, I was trying to go grow holly bushes and I never really had good luck. And then um, somebody told me, you actually have to have a male and a female holly bush to get them to really thrive and produce. And I don't honestly don't remember um, how you tell the holly if the holly bush is male or female, it might have to do with um, if it has berries, but I don't remember. But I did try again one time after that in another home we owned and uh, still had no luck. But they are pretty. The home I grew up in had some in the yard. And I remember that my mom and dad would cut sprigs of holly branch and use them to decorate like around the fireplace mantle or um, a countertop, something like that. And they, it was just always that really lush, um, shiny green too. I don't know what makes those leaves shiny as opposed to other plants. So you get the idea here. You just want to stamp after you layer your your whisper white pieces you want to stamp randomly as if it's as if you're creating your own designer series paper and then if you choose if you chose stamped um, images that need to be colored you're going to color that next color before you take the layers apart And if you stamped with solid images, you don't even have to think about that. This is kind of a fun stamp set to color with because as you can see, they're kind of like, um, the figures images are kind of just sketched on there so they don't have perfect outlines so it gives us a little bit of grace in our coloring if we step outside of those outlines a little bit Okay, probably not my best coloring, but um, it definitely was quick, wasn't it? So let me just add a little detail to these and let this darker mossy meadow ink blend in a bit. I can always go back over the leaves one more time with the light shade to blend them even more, but I'm not going to do that for the sake of time because I wanna get on to showing you how to put this card together. How many of you send handmade Christmas cards? I still like to send handmade Christmas cards. My um, list probably has gotten shorter in some ways, maybe my personal list, just because of moving around and things, but, um, you know, sending to friends and 
people I've met through Stampin' Up! kind of has extended my list once again. I used to make one special design for my own Christmas card that I really didn't teach or share with anybody else. I know it sounds stingy, doesn't it? <laughs> um, but I just wanted mine to be extra special and unique. Um, and then a few years, if I was terribly busy or lots of life changes, I ended up um, giving away some from my stash of Christmas cards. So in that case, they were not all the same. Okay, so now we're going to pull these apart. And before you, if you're working with me, before you pull them apart, it's very important that you keep it flat and you pull at an angle, kind of twist and pull at an angle. Because if you pull up, you're going to end up crinkling your paper or even tearing it. Um, so you definitely want to just sort of wiggle back and forth and pull the side. And you see how cleanly that came off? Now I'm going to do the same thing with the top layer. Wiggle it and pull right across. Okay. Oh, a number of you do send handmade cards still. Welcome Karen and Sue. Who else is late to the party? Tammy and Cecilia, I'm glad you're here. Okay, now we're going back to those cherry cobbler pieces that I had cut. This first layer is going to be mounted right onto the card front. Handmade cards uh, definitely take some time and planning, but um, they're just super special. I know I have people, uh, aunts, friends, uncles, family members who um, who always say, I just, I kept your card, it was just so beautiful. And what a pick me up that is. And great motiva motivation to send out even more handmade cards. So the next piece of Cherry Cobbler, I'm just centering. And then this piece, and you could, I could have put this piece onto the Cherry Cobbler and then added the layers together. But if you notice right here, I'm not matching up. So if the images are not matching up, turn it until they do match up because that's the whole point of the triple stamping technique is that you're stamping on multiple layers, but the images still all match up. And now I'll work with the smallest piece. I used Mossy Meadow for the green. I'm not sure if I said that. Mossy Meadow. And now here the same thing. I want to match it up. That obviously is not matching up. So I'm just going to flip it around like so. And then it's ready to adhere. And you just keep building the layers, center, centering them one on top of the other. And there are several variations to this. Perhaps I'll show you one in the near future. You can do different sizes of cardstock or you can um, maybe turn them at an angle, do something completely different, a different design with your pieces. But whatever design you want, you have to decide on that design before you start stamping because you need those um, layers to be, uh, pieces of cardstock to be layered exactly the way you want them on your finished card. So I'm going to put this right in the center. Well, I'm gonna make a bow first of all. 
I really like this um, diagonal stripe ribbon. I had my October, annual October Creative Escape Weekend in Cincinnati. We had, um, let me think here, we had 38, 39 people attend. And it was really a lot of fun. We were able to, I made some changes as far as setup and what I brought with me. And we were able to um, enjoy the weekend with social dis distancing. Um, we were wearing masks. Um, when we got up and moved around, I had some awesome make and takes for the participants which for me is always the highlight. It's a lot of work, but for me, it's always the highlight of my preparations. And um, fortunately, once again, everybody loved the make and take projects. So I'm thrilled. And they also received quite a bit of Stampin' Up! product with their projects. So really a lot of fun. I've got two more coming up in January and February in Cincinnati. And then I'm also hoping to get some started here in Columbus where I live now. Okay, I'm gonna trim this off just a little bit more. And then I'm going to pop up the sentiment with some dimensionals. Does anybody use dimensionals as much as I do? I'm sort of a dimensional freak because I feel like I need them on everything. <laughs> and just like that, there's my second card. Deck the halls with boughs of holly and be jolly this season. So um, just a really fun technique to do. Um, with solid images, filled in images, or simply with um, sketched or drawn or images that you need to a, um, color in. Any questions about the technique? Julie says she likes it vertical. Oh, I love those hearts and smiley faces. Thank you, ladies. I appreciate that so much. Um, I do want to give you a, oh, and here's the envelope I did earlier. I'm going to give you a tip. When you are coloring on your envelope with Stampin' Blends, always stick in a piece of scrap paper. That way, when you're coloring with the blends, you know how you can, uh, they sort of bleed through and you can see them, the coloring from the opposite side. I'm sure you noticed that when I was adhering these white uh, cardstock pieces to the cherry cobbler layers. But to avoid getting that mess on the back of your envelopes from the Stampin' Blends, just insert a piece of scrap and then do your coloring. Okay, um, just a friendly reminder that this month only, through October 31st, Stampin' Up! has 15 different designer series papers on sale for 15% off. Some of them are from the annual catalog and some are from the holiday catalog. Um, just a really nice assortment of different themes and holidays in that collection of sale pieces or sale designer series paper packs. Oh, that's a mouthful. Okay, thank you so much for spending part of your Wednesday evening with me. I hope you've had a good day and that you have a good evening. I will have my next Facebook Live on Friday at 11 a.m. And that will be in my Stampin' Peace VIP group. So I look forward to seeing you at that time. I have a um, another 
Fun Fold Friday card for you. This time I'm going to show you a shadow box card. So I look forward to seeing you on Friday. Stay safe and healthy and have a good rest of your week. See you soon.